Welcome back, everybody, to Two Cool Guys Talk About Movies. That's right, Mason, it's a rebrand, and we're doing it in the middle of this Hunger Games franchise. I love that. Good rebrand. Uh, accurate. Accurate, hot stuff. Yep. There's nothing cooler than two cool adult men in their middle age talking about the movie adaptation of a young adult novel. The second movie adaptation. S- second one. Yeah, that's right. Please leave a like because we are Please on- leave a like. We're rebranding as cool dudes. We need this to work. We're going to be talking about the Hunger Games catching feelings and fire. Nice. I love that. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. Do you yeah. think that's the metaphor? Yeah. And it's like uh, the fire is for like revolution. Oh. That might be an accident. I don't know if that's on purpose. <laughs> you think so? A lot of the political themes here, I feel like they're not done on purpose. Yeah, I think so. It's probably all an accident. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, to spoil it, there's no really definitive link between, you know, this oppressive government you know, yeah. crushing these, these young people down and them you know, fighting back against that. I think it's just a coincidence. I think Katniss slips at one point. Yes, that's fun. She shoots Alan Richardson at one point. That's right. We'll talk about him. Anyways, Katniss has PTSD from doing a big Hunger Games. Ooh, I'm Katniss. I'm traumatised by all the killing I had to do in the Hunger Games. Ooh, all, all the- Ooh, it's Jack Quaid. I killed him in the last one. Here ooh, he is. Ooh, I made a little friend. She was a little girl and then she got an axe to the head or whatever. Ooh, I saw it. Ooh, I'm sad. Get over it. <laughs> You're rich now or whatever. You got all the grain you could ever want. You stuffed your pockets with grain. Oh, my God. You could give it to all the people and all the birds. That's right. The mocking jays, potentially. Uh, or just some dirty pigeons. Yeah, whatever. That's easy. Now, you can see in this, obviously, that the budget has increased. I mean, you don't need to look any further than the hologram cubed people that you'd practice hitting. Absolutely. That's all good stuff. Yeah, you don't have to look any further than uh, Elizabeth Banks' face where she's requested just a less freakish makeup routine <laughs> for this entire thing. Oh. Less unpleasant, please. More normal, Yeah, it is a mind. Yeah. Well, because the freakish colour palettes are cheaper. Now, Gary Ross, who directed the first film, he was offered to return as director, but he declined. He said this was a hard decision, but he preferred to both write and direct the sequel, and it was impossible to do so because the turnaround on this was like one year. Yeah, right. right? So Francis Lawrence took over this one, and the subsequent ones we will be talking about. Now, of course... Also, mate, you didn't, you didn't write the last one. Whoever wrote the book wrote it. Suzanne... Summers. Boyle. Suzanne Boyle. <laughs> we should find that out. We did. It's Susan Boyle. <laughs> Winner of... Susan Ris- Col- Suzanne Collins. There you go. Yeah. Winner of what? Uh, Winner of Irish ugly people seeing or whatever. <laughs> That's right. Also, she looks like a normal woman. Yeah. Remember there was like 10 years where they were like, look how ugly this woman is. Uh-huh. But yeah. she can sing. That's right. But don't forget how ugly she is. Well, I, th- I think all of you are ugly in your hearts. And also, I've got a different standard of beauty and I think you're physically ugly also. <laughs> and you've had too much surgery. And shut up. <laughs> Now, speaking of things that aren't ugly, Mason, it's the love triangle in this movie. Oh, yeah. It's fully blossomed, right? So President Snow, he decides... He's not in the love triangle. No, I know, but he decides to put... Oh, this is preamble. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's preamble. He decides to put Peter and Katniss on a rebellion tour. Uh, for some sure, reason. Yeah, yeah. Presumably he was tricked into this. It's it's, it's a, a fucking terrible idea. It's their we're sorry for party rocking tour <laughs> is what it is because they did too much party rocking and everybody's like, maybe we'll do some party rocking as well. And then the government's like, don't do any party rocking. So then they have to go around and be like, we didn't actually mean to party rock. We actually just meant, we, did, we didn't do it for rebellion styles. Mm-hmm. We didn't do it Corey Worthington style. Oh my God. Australian party boy Corey Worthington. I've got a really good Australian reference later on as well. Don't you okay, even worry. Great. But we're, we're actually, we're going to tour around to say actually party rocking is bad. <laughs> so And staying in and being nice mm, and to getting, the government. Getting married for the government and having a baby for the government are actually good, actually. That's right, actually, yeah. Now, uh, I mean, we talked about love triangles when we covered the Twilight movies. No. <laughs> are you team? Peter, or are you team Chris Hemsworth's brother? I think I'm team Peter. Okay. Just because we don't really know anything about Gail. Yeah. We know he has incredible hair for a beautiful man living in squalor. <laughs> like just even when he's just been whipped until an inch of his life, yeah, he's still just 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 that perfect. Oh my god, he's probably got two or three products in there. You know what I mean? I would say he would. He'd yeah. probably have maybe a uh, a sea spray kind of that you put in with wet hair. Then a mousse for yeah. volume, <laughs> yeah. and then some maybe some kind of paste to give yeah. it some texture. Absolutely, yeah. And then he then he warms it over a fire to have <laughs> it set in. He just he warms it over a burning bin. But yeah, but I mean, all we really see him as is kind of the jealous boyfriend for mm-hmm, most of mm-hmm. this movie. It's kind of like, what do you keep going away and doing the Hunger Games? I don't know, maybe because our entire society's <laughs> built around it, Gail. <laughs> Gail. <laughs> yeah. But then, and Peter, it's like, he, you know, on the one hand, he's kind of like, well, oh, Katniss, I love you. But I don't really love you. I'm just acting. But I'm not acting. <laughs> I do love you. 
but then we see them bond in real, you know, in real, yeah, in real time, in real time, in real time, and then and you know through the through the the Hunger Games and so forth, and yep. they've got to deal with all this business together. They certainly do. Apologize yeah. for party rocking and so forth, which they should have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of on his side, but then again, it's Chris Hemsworth's brother. Isn't exactly. It? Yeah. See, here's what I think it is. Peter is nice and he's brave mm. and he has excellent cake decorating skills. I would That's even right. say life-saving yeah. cake decorating skills, doesn't right? doesn't really employ him in this one, though, does he? No. He paints a mural of a dead girl, yeah. um, which is his... In cake? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Peter, you've done so well. This is so beautiful. Wait a second. Yeah. Is it a beautiful homage to a dead girl or is it cake? Mm-hmm. That would probably be a TV show in this universe, I assume. Absolutely. So we got all of that on the Peter side. Yeah. But then Chris Hemsworth's brother, he's taller. And if I know anything mm. from watching just exclusively Gosh. Manosphere content, Absolutely. that means he will win out in the end. <laughs> that's right. And that's like yeah, real yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I imagine. That's for- all women are interested in. If we're going to They a- only want tall. <laughs> this is what people tell me on the internet. If we're going to draw a series of green lines, uh, Chris Hemsworth's brother is going to be a straight up line. Yep. And Peter is going to be leaning in. You're leaning in and broken to signify submission. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's just embarrassing, you know? <laughs> Exactly. We're rebranding again. We're Manosphere guys. <laughs> Before we were cool guys who love movies, now we're Manosphere guys. <laughs> now, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman shows up in this, the late great. I've, as... I've written Philip Seymour Hoffman on all in caps here because yeah, I'm like, wrong. yeah, damn. As Plutarch Heaven's Blurt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give him that name. What are you doing? Yeah. Impossible. But he's obviously terrific. He has great scenes with Donald Sutherland. What kind of dress is she going to wear? Floggings. What's the cake going to look like? Executions. I love all of that. Mm. Uh, he gets a lot of play in this, but then more so in the next movie and then not as much the last one because, of course, he died while making yeah. these movies. I also think uh, the inclusion of Commander Thread as the head of the Stormtroopers, that's a good villain. Just a flat-out terrible bloke. Absolutely. Who doesn't come back, I don't think. Oh, doesn't he? I don't think so. Oh. Yeah. I'd remember him getting his. Yeah. You know? I feel like he'll, there'll probably be a riot and he'll get his in a riot or something. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't know. Nice, nice, okay. no, we'll see. Anyways. Maybe somebody will just finally tell him he's wrong. Yeah. He'll stand up to him in a shopping centre yeah. or something. You're actually being really inappropriate yeah. right now. And you're cancelled. Um, anyway, forget all of that because we've got to get back to the Hunger Games, Mason. This is the 75th version. And this time around, they're bringing in previous tributes, right? And what I think is interesting about this group is some of them have clearly kept it up. They're match fit, uh-huh, and sure. some of them clearly went the route of Warwick Kappa. <laughs> oh, that's, that's your local reference. That's my local reference, Australian VFL legend. He's still out and about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. He's still somewhat active. Okay. But just maybe just leave him alone. Don't look at him. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, certainly Sam Claflin has <laughs> gone with the Warwick Kappa frosted tips, you know. But nothing else about him is Warwick Kappa, I feel. They've both got a like a pucker shell necklace vibe. I don't know if either of them is currently wearing That one. is true. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. And what I love about this version of the Hunger Games, where of course they're, they're like you said, they're, they're drawing straws to get previous winners in to increase the thrill level. It's a real, it's a real Australian Idol All-Stars edition or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what I like about it is that this Hunger Games is going to give Katniss the opportunity to kill intellectuals and the elderly. Finally. Yeah, I mean, last time was just kids, you know? Oh, God. I do love the idea of, like, this is a brand new Hunger Games like you've never seen before. There's some old people here. <laughs> this will be slow. You can kill them. You can watch them die. You can just leave them. One of them will just walk into a fog. Maybe <laughs> maybe if they don't do as much killing early on, we'll, we'll set a poisonous fog on them. <laughs> They'll burn all their skin off. They'll all die. We'll just kill them in a poison <laughs> fog. You'd like to see that, wouldn't you? That's thrilling. Okay, maybe so- while they're asleep. I think a problem with this movie is that they really step up the in-arena shenanigans. Okay, And yeah. I think it's to the detriment of what The Hunger Games is really about, and that is just flat-out murder. And I think they step it up because they know that the alliances are going to be tighter. Yeah, right. I think uh-huh. they know that, but, like, force fields and lightning trees and monkeys and poison fog and water coming out of trees and talking birds who have mimicked... Do you think the water coming out of trees? <laughs> Do you think that was part it's of It's too the- far. Just put a tap in. It's fine. It's, it's too complicated. Okay. I don't have time for any of that. Get maybe just one of those big plastic drums of orange cordial yeah. that McDonald's rents out to sports games. That's a local <laughs> That's reference. That's a local reference. Yeah, the thing is, right, because in the last one, like, there is an element of you need to learn how to survive. But in this one, mm. they're just in a giant clock of death that never stops. So I think you should pull back on the can you start a fire shit, you know? Right, uh-huh. There's no time for that. 
I think what they should probably do is just cancel the Hunger Games entirely. Well, me just, too. And just replace it with a show that's just like, well, look at all the cool stuff we made. <laughs> Yeah. We made a nanotech panther or whatever. We made these monkeys do whatever we want. <laughs> Look at that. Poison fog. Force field. <laughs> Try and get through that. You've got a bloke hit it with a hammer. You can't get through it. You can't even see it. Are you saying that uh, to risk putting in another local reference, they do their version of Australia's own Beyond 2000? Absolutely. I think they should do Beyond 2000. <laughs> Great. That's a car that can turn into a boat. <laughs> it was always a car that could turn into a boat, by the way. If anybody's seen that show, it was exclusively about that. Anyways, I feel like all that stuff, though, yeah, it distracts from everyone killing each other. Uh-huh. And that's the stuff that I like. I don't need a monkey fight, right? Right. Uh-huh. There's too many mates, right? Too many alliances is what you're too saying. Too many alliances. Okay, because you figured they would all team up. Exactly. Also, it's rich of them to assume that when they're doing the interviews with the former winners of the Hunger Games. Oh, they're going to be cool with it. They all toe the line a bit, you know, because they were all told that, you know, yeah. you do the, you, you're great and you'll live forever. You're great and you live forever. And then all of a sudden they get Stanley Tucci with his blindingly white teeth out there and be like, what do you think about this new Hunger Games? And they're like, I hate it. Why am I here? I hate you. This sucks. Let's do a rebellion. And he's like, oh, I don't know about that. Pretty feisty. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, next contestant. Next. Speaking of, yep. like you mentioned, I love the psychos are better in this. I do like the colourful cast of characters. You've got a trident guy. There's a naked woman. Jack Reacher is there. Batman's friend Commissioner Gordon makes an appearance. That's right. Amanda Plummer is there. That's Honey right. Honey Bunny from Pulp <laughs> Fiction is in there. That's a freak for sure. Yeah, I'm loving Jenna Malone as this naked weirdo freak. Yeah. She's great. Doing great work there. Way more memorable, this group. Definitely. Now, the big twist at the end of this, everybody mm. in the world is seemingly in on this except for Katniss Everdeen. That's right. It's actually that this Hunger Games was orchestrated by one Philip Seymour Hoffman, Plutarch, Sausage, Blurt. Sausage Blurg. Yes. <laughs> that it's actually a revolution. It's the beginning of a revolution. Whoa. Yeah. And uh, the idea was to do the Hunger Games but then get Katniss out and use her as the as a poster, essentially, mm. which we'll talk about more in the, in the follow-up movies. But I think my problem with this is that, well, a couple of things. For one, and you mentioned this last week, Katniss is not making any hard decisions again. Mm-hmm. She's never in a situation where she has to kill anybody that she likes or choose between two kind of things happening. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. like, do I save Peter or do I save Chris Hemsworth's brother? Maybe that comes up, I can't remember. But you know what I mean? There's yeah, that. Yeah. And I also feel like this one definitely feels... Like- I loved you in the French Dispatch, Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. I'm so sorry, bang. I loved you in the Shaft reboot with Samuel L. Jackson, but not the more recent one. The one in like the early 2000s, Christian Bale's in it. Bang. <laughs> She's found that gun again. <laughs> yeah, Lady Kravitz would have told her again before he mm. was savagely beaten to death. Oh, I'm Katniss, my fashion designer bestie got bashed up and dragged away to his doom. Boo. Yeah. Boo. Boo. Get over it, God. God, get over it. But I feel like this one feels like more of a cog in an ongoing saga. Okay. But I think the execution of that. But is that's a- what the people want. No, I know that, but I think. The ongoing saga of it isn't as compelling as the original core idea, which is great as like a standalone piece. Right, okay, sure. You know? But don't you think the kids would get bored if it was just a battle royale? Well, they got bored because they drop off in in quality and box office, which we'll talk about. Now, I know last week we talked about like, how would you survive the Hunger Games? And we came Mm. to the conclusion that I would run off a cliff accidentally and you would just be the best and you would win. Sure. Yeah. Now, that is true. I don't want to go with that again. Also, because the start is water-based... I'm no good here. Like I would, <laughs> I, I can swim because everyone in Australia, you have to swim. It's just something that they make you do, but I'm not that they good. They fill at- up the classroom <laughs> with water and they let a shark in <laughs> and you just got to deal with that. That's right. So look, I wouldn't survive at all, but what would you do for your 10 minutes to show the aristocracy what you can do? Right. Would you paint a dead girl? Would you hang a mannequin that looks like Wes Bentley? Oh, maybe I'd put a, a fancy outfit on and everyone would be like, that's a pretty normal fancy outfit. And then I'd push a button and it'd be all on fire. Yawn. <laughs> Boring. Just keep doing that, Katniss. Yeah. Yawn. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Mm. But to answer your question, I do yo-yo tricks. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Would you do Walk the Dog? Yes. Would you do Round the World? Yes. It's not that impressive, though, so you're going to have to follow it up with something else. Um... Two yo-yos. Whoa! Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I also, I don't get the point of that. You're showing these people what you can do because you get a ranking, but like, it's not that important. I think it'd be more important to just not let anybody know that you can do anything. I think that would be the play, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And in my case, that would be true. They'd bring me in, they'd be like, you got 10 minutes, and I'd be like... (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you what do you want me to do? Do you want me to sing? I can't. I will, but I can't. <laughs> oh, I can do ten minutes of crowd work. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? Oh, Pan Am, the capital. What do you do? Oh, you're part of the, the fascist society, impressing the, the disenfranchised. Ha <laughs> ha! Good on you, buddy. Good on you, mate. Score up nine. Anyway, it's time for the hung trivia. Catching trivia. This is the trivia section of the show. I love that. Here we go. Just got a few this week. So all three of Ed Sheeran's songs submitted for the film soundtrack were turned down. Ouch. Mm, that must sting. I don't know if my songs fit in films. Do you want them to? I mean, yeah, that's why I pitched them. <laughs> they might have been good ones. Or they weren't. I didn't look into it. <laughs> that must sting. He probably looks at his multi-billion dollar bank balance every day and he's like, oh, I wish, I wish I was in Hunger Games too. At least I got to be in Game of Thrones and everyone screamed at me. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let him be in Game of Thrones. He's rich. Let him do what he let wants. Let him do what he wants. <laughs> Seems like a nice man <laughs> with bad tattoos. Yeah. Now, do you want to know how Haymitch won his Hunger Games? This is in the book. Did he cry until they just let him have it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, basically. So Hamish Abernathy, that's his name, he won the 50th Hunger Games, which was the second quarter quell. And as a result... <laughs> So they just let him in the quarter quell? Yeah, well, I guess. It was just straight up in the quarter quell. Well, the quarter quell isn't normally get everybody who's previously done it. Oh. This was a, this was a ploy. This was a ploy. I thought it might have been. Or an accident mm. to kill Katniss or whatever. Yeah, right. Yeah. But as a result of it being the quarter quell, there was twice as many tributes. So he lured the last remaining tribute to a force field in his arena, and she was killed when she threw an axe at him, which bounced off the force field and flew back to her. Whoa. She didn't catch it. Wow. Hit her in the face. And she died. Well. And he went, great. I'm taking my shoes off and I'm getting drunk for the next 25 years. <laughs> uh, and one more bit of trivia, but it's just going to be a clip. Have you seen the interview with Woody Harrelson and Liam Hemsworth where something comes up about Chris Hemsworth and then Woody Harrelson puts it together that they're brothers? No, I've not seen that. Well, here it is. A brother called Chris. Uh, that's right. He has yeah. a movie coming out uh, this got weekend. A, he's got a movie coming out. Yeah. Where he plays uh, yeah, Chris Van Vliet, CBS Cleveland. <laughs> Honestly, never oh put God. that together. That Cheers never to that. To we never talked about it. Oh never. my God. Never. Never even occurred to me. That's yeah, I mean, awesome. now that he mentions it, I totally get it. Oh. I totally get it. You know, if I were Liam Hemsworth, I probably would have used that moment to put together the thing about how Woody Harrelson's dad's a hitman or whatever for <laughs> yeah, the mafia. Well, oh, so your dad, is it? Yeah. Oh, is it? Is it? Is it Woody? Mm. Is it? Oh, Matthew McConaughey's maybe your brother or something, which is the thing you've been saying recently. Is that true? Why don't you get a test then? Oh, you don't want to? Then it's not true, isn't it? <laughs> now, the cost of this movie, on a budget, an increased budget, because of all those hologram cube boys of $140 million, the box office return was $865 million, which is actually the peak of this franchise. Oh, no, but there's two more movies to go. Two more movies, Mason. Downhill. You're right. But I mean... You know, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Even a slight dip. It's fine. Yeah. Now, we talked about this last week, but one thing that is not going to be dipping is the paycheck of one Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, yes. Uh, so instead of the half a million dollars which she got for the first one, this time around she got $10 million. Damn. Damn. Worth every penny? I think so. Cool. Yeah. She's good in this role. I agree. It's a lot of money. A lot of money. I don't think anybody should get paid anything. Yeah. You know? Anyways, come back next week for Hunger Games... Part one. No. <laughs> mocking <wrong. laughs> mocking the presidents, no. though. Just, just sticking it to him. Yeah. Part uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. With 10 minutes of powerful insult comedy. <laughs> <laughs> President Snow so old that he was in the original MASH movie. Ooh. And that's true. It is true. It's a true fact. Yeah. Now, if you do want to see that earlier, you can actually head over to bigsandwich.co, where guess what, Mason? What? There's actually a bunch of bonus stuff there that goes there exclusively. There's movie commentaries. There's video game Let's Plays. There's bonus podcasts. Whoa. Our podcast, though, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows every Monday, that actually comes out there Sunday as opposed to Monday. All of that is ad-free. But yeah, check out our podcast. What are you checking it's out? It's got its own YouTube channel. It's on Spotify, Apple, etc. It's like this. It's longer. It has less energy. Now, yeah. Because you know, we, we got yep. to spread it out. You know? Yeah, it's The Hunger Games Part 3 and 4 of podcasts. That's Just right. Just really spread out. That's right. Not enough information, too much space. Yeah. You know? Anyways, thank you to Ben and Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. And we'll see you all on the next one. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you real soon. Mm-hmm.